Shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Master, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So, today, my fellow brothers and sisters, we'll be talking about Genesis 49, Bereshit, Genesis 49, Jacob's Prophecy of Yeshua. So, continuing with the theme, the same theme from last week, concerning how many have been falling away from the faith, the Emunah, and denouncing Yeshua and the New Testament, the Berit Hadashah, I want to I wanted to offer more proof from the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, found in Genesis, proving that Yeshua is who he says he is. And we will begin looking at, um, we'll start off with the text from the Masoretic text first, and then we'll compare it to the Septuagint to make it clearer. So, um, like I said, I always feel like it's necessary to do this. I'm here to defend um, Yeshua HaMashiach. Anybody in the belief, nobody denies who the Father is, but many deny the Son. And um, I'm here to defend um, this position and I have many videos I think that's probably the 14th one I want to say because it's important okay so let's look at uh, Genesis 49 chapter 49 verse 8 through 10 and the Masoretic text first it says you Yehuda Judah your brothers praise you and your hand is on the neck of your enemies your dad's children bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey you have gone up, my son. He bowed down. He crouched like a lion, and like a lion who rouses him. The scepter shall not turn aside from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him is the obedience of the peoples. So, Reading that in the Masoretic text is a bit unclear, okay? So now we're going to read the exact same verses in the Septuagint. This is how it reads. Yehuda, Judah, your brothers have praised you, and your hand shall be on the back of your enemies. Your dad's son shall honor you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the tender plant, my son, you have gone up. Having crouched, you lie as a lion, as a cub. Who shall stir him up? A ruler shall not fail from Judah, nor a prince or king from his thighs, until there comes the thing stored up for him, and he is the expectation of the nations, of the Gentiles. You see that? We can see in the Septuagint version that the prophecy of Yeshua is clear that from the tribe of Judah, there would not fail to be a ruler or a king, and that ruler would be the expectation of the Gentiles. This ties into the prophecy that uh, uh, the, the Navi, Micah, said in uh, Micah 5, 2. So for anybody who doesn't know, this is when um, Jacob was uh, blessing and prophesying over his sons. Okay, in Genesis 49, and that, that's what he said is blessing over Judah. Okay, that a ruler shall not fail from him. A ruler shall not fail, and he is the expectation of the nations. Okay, now, to go along with being a king, let's look at passages about being a king. Micah 5, 2 is another prophecy that I absolutely love. And you, Bethlehem, that's the city Yeshua was born, Bethlehem, house of Ephrathah. Are few in number to be reckon, reckoned among the thousands of Yehuda, Judah. Yet out of you, one shall come out to me to be ruler of Israel. And his goings out were from the beginning, even from the days of eternity. What another beautiful prophecy. This prophecy here of uh, Micah shows the divinity of Yeshua, that he is the Aramaic word that we talked about before, the Miltha. 
the physical manifestation of Yahweh, the substance of Yahweh, who existed from the very beginning, okay, before the creation of the world, and shows that he would become flesh. David understood that there would be a ruler, okay, a ruler from his bloodline, from the tribe of Judah to sit on the throne as Jacob prophesied over Judah because Yahweh promised this to him, which means that Yeshua would descend from him to fulfill this prophecy. So let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16 through 29. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16 through 29. So this is showing that we're just going back to the prophecy that uh, Jacob said that there shall not fail to be a ruler from him, from, from the tribe of Judah. So here we go. And your house and your reign are to be steadfast forever before you. Your throne is established forever according to all of the words and according to all of this vision. So Nathan spoke to David. And King David went in and sat before Yahweh and he said, who am I? Who am I, O Master Yahweh? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small matter in your eyes, O Master Yahweh. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. The future. The, <laughs> this is a prophecy. And this and and. And is this the teaching of man, O Master Yahweh? And what more does David say to you? For you, my Master Yahweh, know your servant. Now let's go to verse 25. And now, O Yahweh Elohim, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever. And do as you have said, and let your name be made great forever. Saying, Yahweh save our oath, Yahweh of hosts, is the Elohim of Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Yahweh, save our oath, the Elohim of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I built you a house. Therefore, your servant has taken, taken heart to pray this prayer before you. And now, O oh my master Yahweh, you are Elohim, and your words are true. And you have spoken this goodness to your you have spoken to your servant. And now be pleased to bless the house of your servant to be before you forever. For you, O oh my master Yahweh, have spoken it. And with your blessings, let the house of your servant be blessed forever so see Yahweh promised this to David that there would not cease to be a ruler from him as well right so we can see this in Acts chapter 13 verse 22 through 23 and jumping ahead a little and having removed him he talking about Saul he removed Saul and raised up for them David as king to whom also he gave witness and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after my own heart who shall do all my desires from this one seed, according to the promise Yahweh raised up for Israel, a savior, Yeshua. So Yeshua came from the bloodline of David, who was from the tribe of Judah. OK, and it would be king just as prophesied um, and the blessing that Jacob did over his son Judah in Genesis 49. It's all tying in. And we see that Yahweh established the house of David forever. And of course, David would not live forever, okay? So this was a prophecy that our Messiah, our Mashiach, who would be king, which is why Ezekiel uses this colorful language to explain this in the end times prophecy. Let's look at Ezekiel 37, 24. And my servant David, which would be Yeshua, shall be a prince, king, in the midst of them, there shall be one shepherd for them all, for they shall walk in my decrees and keep my judgments and do them. And they shall dwell in their land, which I have given to my servant, Yaakov, Jacob, 
where their ancestors dwelt. And they shall dwell on it. And David, Yeshua, my servant, shall be their king forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will establish my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. And my tabernacle shall be among them. And I shall be to them Elohim. And they shall be my people. And the nations shall know that I am Yahweh that sanctifies them. Well, my sanctuary is in the midst of them forever. So we can see that that's an end time prophecy. And it uses the word David to represent Yeshua because he um, descended from the tribe. He's from the, um, the bloodline of David, which made him rightful heir to the throne. Okay, so it's truly beautiful when we see that because as as um, Peter talked about, was it in, I think it's Acts chapter 3 and in Acts 13, Saul talked about it that David saw corruption. In other words, he died. Okay, he was buried and he died. Yeshua's flesh did not see corruption because he was raised up on the third day. Okay, so just an example right there. And Matthew 1, 1, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The book of the genealogy of Yeshua HaMashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So here we see that Matthew connects Yeshua to the lineage of David from the tribe of Judah, which shows that he is the rightful heir to the throne by calling him the son of David. As Yahweh promised David, you see, that he would never cease to have a man to sit on the throne. Okay, and saying that Yeshua is the son of Abraham just connects him with being a Hebrew and that all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Genesis 12. Okay, now let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 33. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 33. And see, you shall conceive in your womb, and you shall give birth to a son, and call his name Yeshua. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High. And Yahweh Elohim shall give him the throne of his ancestor, David. You see how it's all tying in? And he shall reign over the house of Yaakov, Jacob, forever. And there shall be no end to his reign. There shall be no end to his reign. In Revelation 22, 16. Revelation 22, 16. I, Yeshua, have sent my Malak messenger to witness these to you in the assemblies i am the root and the offspring of david the bright and morning star revelation chapter 5 verse 5 through 9 revelation chapter 5 verse 5 through 9 and one of the elders said to me do not weep see the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, Judah, the root of David, overcame to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals. And I looked and saw in the midst of the throne, of the midst of the, of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, a lamb standing as having been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. And we know that lamb is Yeshua. He, he is the, uh, the roaring lion of Judah, the root of David, just as we saw from Revelation twenty two sixteen. Okay. They all fell down and were, they all fell down and he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him sitting on the throne and he took the scroll. The four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the Kodeshim, the saints. 
And they sang a renewed song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and have been redeemed and have redeemed us to Yahweh by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and made us kings, made us kings, Malachim and priests, Kohenim to our Elohim and we shall reign upon the earth. Hallelujah. Psalms, Tehillim, chapter 45, verse 6 through 7. Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of your reign is a scepter of straightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness, more than your companions and we see this reiterated um in hebrews chapter 1 verse 5 through 9 okay so that prophecy that was a prophecy in psalms okay and then it is reiterated in hebrews hebrews chapter 1 verse 5 through 9 for for to you for to which of the messengers did he ever say you are my son today i have begotten you and again I shall be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he again brings the first begotten into the world, he says, Let all the messengers, the Malachim of Yahweh, do reverence to him. And of the messengers, indeed, he says, Who is making his messengers spirits and his servants a flame of fire? But to the son, this is the part that we just read in Psalms, but to the son, your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever a scepter of straightness is the scepter of your reign you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness because of this yahweh your elohim has anointed you with oil of gladness more than your companions hallelujah daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and i saw and the night vision, and look, one coming on the clouds of heaven. Okay, now this reminds me of Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. Matthew chapter 26, verse 64, where he says, From now on, you will see me sitting at the right hand of power, coming on the clouds of the Shamayim. Okay. So I saw in the night vision and look, one coming on the clouds of heaven, Shamayim, right? As the son of man, and he approached the ancient of days and was bright. I mean, it was brought near to him and, he, and to him was given the dominion and the honor and the kingdom and all nations, tribes and languages shall serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion and shall not pass away and his kingdom shall not be destroyed so the prophecy of jacob spoken back in genesis 49 was all concerning yeshua the son of yahweh who will sit on the throne forever and we just went through a whole lot of scriptures pointing that out hallelujah now the the light to the gentiles that's the second part. He is the expectation of the nations, the Gentiles. So the other part of the prophecy that Jacob mentioned outside of Yeshua being king is that he is the expectation of the nations, the Gentiles, meaning that his mission was to bring people, was to bring all people and nations to the truth and give them the hope of salvation of the one true living Elohim which would be through his blood drawing all to himself, okay? And that they would walk in his light and see this revelation. They would see this revelation. So the beautiful thing is that we already see the Gentiles being grafted into the nation of Israel, of Israel in the Old Testament, right? Ruth was a Moabite. Caleb was a Kezanite. Elijah was a Tishbite. Tamar was a Canaanite, 
and we can get a, a good grasp of this when we look at the genealogy of the, of the four women um, in Matthew chapter 1 that were Gentiles grafted in. Okay, they were in the bloodline of Yeshua. Okay, so um, we can see it going back as early as um, Exodus chapter 12, verse 37 and 48 through uh, verses 48 through 50. We're going to look at them in the Septuagint. And the children of Israel have the having departed from Ramses the Sukkah to fulfill to the full number of 600,000 footmen, even men besides the baggage. And a great mixed company, which is the Gentiles, went up with them, and sheep and oxen and very much cattle. So when the, when the children of Israel left Mitzrayim, Egypt, a mixed company or a mixed multitude went up with them too. Okay, these were Gentiles that were with them already. Okay, then verse 48 through 50. And if any proselyte, which is a person who has converted from one religion to another, so they converted from their paganism into the truth. And if any proselyte comes to you to keep the Pesach, the Passover to Yahweh, you shall circumcise every male of his, and then he shall approach to sacrifice it, and he shall be even as an original inhabitant of the land. So he would become as a native born. This is the Gentile. No uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one Torah to the native and to the proselyte coming among you. And the children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moshe, Moses, and Aharon, Aaron, for them, so they did. But now, through Yeshua, the entire world will be able to receive the Ruach HaKodesh if they believe, which he said will be poured out when he, when he ascended into the Shamaim, okay, and have repentance unto life because Yeshua died for the world. The whole world now has access. Okay, if you believe, you receive the Ruach HaKodesh, you keep the commandments, you are a part of the nation of Israel. Okay, and we see uh, what Paul is saying in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 29, where he says, For you are all sons of Elohim through belief in Messiah Yeshua, Mashiach. For as many of you were immersed into Messiah, have put on Messiah. There is not Jew nor Greek. There is not slave nor free. There is not male or female. And they female. For you are all one in Mashiach, Messiah Yeshua. And if you are of Messiah, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Light to the Gentiles, Luke chapter 2, verse 29 through 32. Now, this is um, when Simon was speaking. Now let your servant go in peace, O my master, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your deliverance, which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples. A light for the unveiling of the Gentiles. And the esteem of your people, Israel. Okay. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. Septuagint. I, Yahweh, have called you in righteousness. And will hold your hand and will strengthen you. And I've given you the covenant of a race for a light of the Gentiles. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. And he said to me, it is a great thing for you to be called my servant, to establish the tribes of Yaakov, Jacob, to recover the dispersion of Israel. See, I have given to you the covenant of a race as a light of the Gentiles, that you should be as salvation to the end of the earth. So he is the light of to the Gentiles. What is light? What is light? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Scripture tells us what light is. Okay. For the command is a lamp and the Torah 
a light. The Torah is the light. And we know that Yeshua is the written word that became living flesh. So he is the living Torah. Okay, so he is both light and Torah. Now, let's look at John chapter 3, verse 29 through 21. John chapter 3, verse John chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. And this is the judgment that the light, Yeshua, the Torah, has come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than the light, the Torah. For the works were wicked, meaning lawlessness. They don't, they turn away from the Torah. They, they like wickedness. For everyone who is practicing evil hates the light, the Torah. It does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed, his lawlessness, because the Torah exposes the lawless deeds, the darkness, the lawlessness. But the one doing the truth comes to the light, the Torah, so that his works are clearly seen that have been wrought in Elohim. You see how that works? Then John 8, 12, Therefore Yeshua spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possess the light of life. So he who walks with Yeshua will not walk, walk in darkness, which is lawlessness, but possess the light of life. Okay, so I bring this up to show that the Gentiles will see the truth of Yeshua, who is the light, a.k.a. the living Torah, and they would walk in darkness. In that light, just as the native born, by obeying the commandments of the Torah, because the native born were disobedient to Yahweh, right? So he sent salvation to the Gentiles because he said that they would listen, which is further evidence that the Gentiles, when they see this light, the unveiling of the light, that there is no longer Jew, Greek, male or female, slave or free, right? That they would be grafted in and to walk in the light and not in darkness by saying that the law is done away with, that the Torah is done away with. But to walk in that light, the guidelines and instructions of our father Yahweh, which Christianity calls the law. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. Yahweh says, they made me jealous by what is not ail." Or what most people will say, G-O-D, but we ought to know I don't say that. So they made me jealous by what is not ail. They provoked me with their worthlessness, but I make them jealous by those who are no people. I provoke them with a foolish nation. That's the Gentiles. OK, so the only way that a Gentile can provoke the native born Israelites to jealousy is by having faith in Yeshua and keeping the commandments. If you are being lawless, not keeping Torah, then you're not going to provoke anyone because they see your lawless deeds. They say, "Oh, whatever." You know, you're that's they're 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 Christians, right? That's not what you want to be. If you are believing in Yeshua and keeping the commandments, they're going to say, "Wow, what, what's the difference between them and me?" Oh, they believe in Yeshua. You see, so that would provoke them to jealousy. But you have the Gentiles grafted in, have to be obedient to the commands. As Yahweh says in 2 Ezra chapter 1, verse 24, and verse 35 through 37. What shall I do unto you, O Jacob? You, Judah, would not obey me. I shall turn myself to other nations, Gentiles, and to them I shall give my name that they may guard my laws. You see that? He didn't say he would turn to the other nations and they would have to do away with the law, the Torah. He says, no, I will give them my name and they will guard my laws. Verse 35, I shall give your houses to a people that shall come. The Gentiles who have not yet heard of me shall believe me to whom I showed no signs. Yet they shall do what I have commanded them. They have seen no Nevi'im, prophets, yet they call their sins to remembrance, repentance, teshuva, and acknowledge them. I call to witness the favor of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the word 
that I say. You see that? Same thing that he said in Deuteronomy 32, 21, that he would provoke them because they would listen. Okay, he said they would hear his word. They would believe the word that he says. Acts chapter 13, verse 46 through 48. Acts chapter 13, verse 46 through 48. But speaking boldly, Paul, Shaul, and Barnabas said, It is necessary that the word of Elohim should be spoken to you first, the Jews. But since you thrust it away and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, see, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the master has commanded us. I have appointed you to be a light to the Gentiles, that you should to light to the Gentiles, that you should be for deliverance to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of Yahweh. As many as had been appointed to everlasting life believe. Hallelujah. Do you see? It's beautiful how all the scriptures are connecting. Acts chapter 26, verse 22 through 23. Therefore, having obtained help from Elohim to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying, Kneel, else than what the prophets and Moses said would come, that Hamashiach would suffer, would be the first to rise from the dead, and he would proclaim light to the people and to the Gentiles. He would proclaim the Torah to the people and to the Gentiles, the light. Enoch, Hanak, chapter 48, verse 2 through 6. And at that hour, the Son of Man was named in the presence of the Master of Spirits, and his name before the head of days. Yes, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven, the Shamaim were made. His name was named before the Master of Spirits. He will be a staff to the righteous on which they to steady themselves and not fall. And he will be a light of the nations. And the hope of those who are troubled in heart. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him. And he will praise and bless and celebrate the master of spirits with song. And for this reason, he has been chosen and hidden before him. Before the creation of the world and forevermore. Hallelujah. In conclusion, we see from the writings of Enoch, Hanak, that Yeshua was already prophesied to be a light to the nation. I mean, be a light to the, the, the Gentiles, excuse me. That he was prophesied to be a light to the Gentiles, the nations, from the very beginning. So Jacob was just speaking what was what was to happen through his son Judah's lineage in Genesis 49. That Yeshua, the son of Yahweh, would be king, Melech, and be a light to the Gentiles. All proving again that we all must accept Yeshua because the Old Testament is filled with prophecies concerning him. He is the son of Yahweh. He is our king. He is the written word that became living flesh. He is the living Torah. And without him, there is no salvation. Okay, so you have to accept him because Yahweh and his son Yeshua are one. Ahad. Hallelujah. As always, may our Father Yahweh bless you in Yeshua's name. And uh, Todah Rabbah, thank you very much for joining in. And shalom to you all.